Hi everybody, welcome to our homestead. It is an absolutely gorgeous day. The sun is shining, it's the perfect temperature, and it is just gorgeous. Here in Southern Missouri, it is a wonderful spring day and everything is starting to green up really nicely. It's just beautiful. And it's these days that make me wanna go outside, start looking at what is growing and start foraging for edibles and medicinals. Now I think it's more important than ever to start learning some of the things that grow around you that you can eat. If you don't have a garden or if you can't get to the grocery store, there are things all around you that have tons of nutrition and they taste amazing. So today I wanna to spend some time going around different areas of our property to show you different things that are edible and medicinal. Now, even though I'm gonna show you lots of things that are edible, some things that are medicinal, don't just take my word for it. Make sure that you are checking several different sources, comparing those things to what it is that you think you found before you eat anything or use anything in a medicinal way. And before we start searching for things, let's just talk about places that you shouldn't be foraging from. The first place is anywhere that has been treated with chemicals any lawns that are sprayed, parks or golf courses, places where you know they could be spraying. The second place that you should avoid doing any foraging from are ditches next to roads, especially roads that are really busy. Lots of chemicals and fumes can be absorbed by all those plants in the ditches. And the last place not to forage from is anywhere where you have animals free ranging, especially chickens, ducks, anywhere that's gonna have a lot of animal poop. Uh, your dog pen, don't be picking your salad for dinner from those areas. Okay, so I feel a little bit better now that I've warned you about a few things. Let's, um, let's get up and start looking around for things that are edible. I'm hoping to find a combination of things that are probably in your backyard that are very common along with some other things that maybe you've never seen before. So let's get started. So the first thing is so common, probably in everybody's yard, and that is the dandelion. Dandelion leaves are very nutritious. You can have them raw in a salad, you can cook them like a green, uh, but also the flowers can be harvested. They're edible. You can use them to make wine, you can make tea, a sun tea or a hot tea. So the next time you're tempted to pull these out of your yard, think twice because they are a source of food. Now also in your front yard is plantain. There are two types of plantain that grow here very commonly. And uh, they look similar, but they also look a little bit different. And they actually happen to be growing right next to each other. So this one here, this is broadleaf plantain. And this one here is narrow leaf plantain. I'm gonna grab one from over here as a better illustration of the narrow leaf. So both of these are edible and actually they're both medicinal. Now I'm not gonna get into the medicinal properties of the things that I'm talking with you about. I'm gonna leave that up to you to research that. A lot of medicinals have lots of different things that can help and I, I just don't feel comfortable talking about every single one of those. And the plantain, both kinds are edible. Now I didn't tell you that the various parts of the dandelion are also medicinal, so make sure you're looking into those things as well. Let's see what else we can find. Keep a lookout for different varieties of wild onions. We have a lot of what's called onion grass around here. I don't know its technical name, uh, but here you can see some that has gotten really big. When it gets this size, you can actually pull out some from the ground and see the onion part that has been growing. You can see there are tiny little onion bulbs on the bottom here. So you can pull these out and you know wash them up and uh, chop them up and use them in your cooking. 
but the smaller versions of this, when they're smaller and just first coming out of the ground, you can chop them right at the ground level and use them like chives or just small green onions. So keep a lookout for these. They definitely smell like onions. In some pretty shaded areas where the soil stays moist and cool, you can find chickweed, which is something that comes out in the early spring and is just nice and fresh and tasty. Chickweed is a lighter green and on top has tiny little white flowers. It's very tasty and really good for you. Chickweed is actually good on its own in a nice little salad uh, tossed with some vinaigrette. It is very good. Now it tastes best in the early spring when it is still new. Otherwise it can get a little bit bitter as it gets older. But try to find some chickweed and taste it. There's lots more to show you. I want to start heading back into the woods and I'll show you everything I can find on the way back. But before we head back there, there's something I want to check and show you guys. We're down to one female turkey, but she's just started laying. So I want to go in and peek on her nest and see if she's laid another one today. She's made a nest back in the corner. Well, it looks like she laid another egg today. So I'm gonna run into the house and grab a bowl because we're going to take some of them from the nest so that we can incubate them in the house. Well, we have eight total turkey eggs. So we've decided to take all of the turkey eggs and incubate them in the house. We want the best chance possible to get as many baby turkeys as we can and there's a chance that she may not uh, try to sit on these and hatch these and we don't want to lose an entire clutch of eggs because she just decided not to sit on them so what we've done is we've put three duck eggs in her nest so that she sees that there are still eggs in there we're going to start incubating these eggs and if she continues to lay eggs, we'll either let her try to sit and hatch those, or we'll grab those at another time and incubate, incubate them separately. Now, turkeys only lay eggs one time during the year, not like chickens who continue to lay an egg every day almost the entire year. Ducks lay quite a few eggs too throughout the year, but turkeys just have one time of year that they lay eggs. A female turkey could only lay a couple of eggs or they could lay up to like 14 or 16 eggs in one nest before they start to sit and uh, incubate them on their own. Uh, but we just decided, like I said, that we didn't want to take the chance that she may have no interest in sitting on them. And we're gonna incubate at least these first eight eggs in the house. Well, back to foraging and I brought my cute basket. I have seen multiple things that I want to show you in this overgrown raised bed garden. We've grown onions in this garden for the past at least two years, maybe three years, and the weeds have completely taken over. But there are lots of things in there that are edible and I want to show you. There are a couple things just right here. Uh, the first one is, is this plant here. You can see these leaves. This is curly dock. It also goes by yellow dock or sour dock. This, these are greens that can be cooked like um, spinach or kale. Uh, they're very good for you. I would um, boil these then pan fry them. You can even blanch these and freeze them for later. So uh, this is very nutritious. So keep a lookout for curly dock. Also, there is, there's clover here. These big clover leaves, this uh, shows you because of the size, these are uh, the red clover. Now the leaves are edible, but most people will wait for their flowers. So the red flowers and the white flowers you can use. Also over here is yellow rocket. Let's go check out some yellow rocket. 
in amongst this clover patch here is this plant here called yellow rocket. You can see these nice yellow flowers on them. Now the leaves on here are edible. Actually, everything is edible. The flowers, the stems, the older the plant is, the more bitter they will taste. But a lot of times the <laughs> buds and the stems taste like broccoli and the leaves are very good too. Let's keep heading down toward the woods. Now here's an example of broadleaf dock. Now I talked with you about curly dock, which is also called yellow dock, sour dock. This is another dock that is edible and can be eaten like a green. You can see that the leaves are much bigger and they have veins that are red. These can grow pretty big and they oftentimes grow in areas where the soil isn't very good, next to pastures and uh, things that are kind of open. So keep your eye out for these. Well, we've made it back to where the woods start. So let's head down the trail and see what we can find. Here's some nice wood sorrel. It grows low to the ground in the forest and it has uh, three leaves kind of like a clover. You can see there it has a little bit of purple and on the back the leaves are purple. The flowers are pink. A nice cluster of them. And wood sorrel is it's sour, kind of like lemon or, you know, very citrusy. It's a nice snack on a hike. Woo! They're good if you pick a few and then add them to your salad. They're very tasty and fun to pick when you're on a walk. Just have a little treat. Yum. One of our favorite things to harvest from this trail is one of our very, very favorite things to make sun tea with. I hope it's there again this spring. Let's go take a look. Well, it's just starting to come up. We have a nice patch of wild mint that grows here. It is so flavorful and so tasty. Mm, so good. It's like chewing on a piece of gum. Now, later on in the spring and in the summer, we'll come and we'll harvest big branches of it and put it in half gallon mason jars filled with water and put that out in the sun and make a sun tea. We'll bring it in and cool it off in the refrigerator or put it over ice. And it's so refreshing in the summer to have a cold iced tea with wild peppermint. Right in here is a cluster of wild blackberries and wild black raspberries. And at this time of year is when they're getting their new leaves. And it's a great time to harvest their leaves for medicinal purposes. So this here is a blackberry branch. And if you're gonna harvest the leaves, you can just, you know, pick them off. They will regrow new leaves, so you don't have to worry about it if you take a lot of them. Now, the black raspberries and the blackberries have different medicinal properties, so you'll want to look them up separately. But you can just harvest these, dry them in the house, either um, on a platter, uh, out in the regular air, or you could put them in a dehydrator and then keep them in a mason jar for when you need them. I want to quickly show you the difference between blackberry bushes and raspberry bushes so you can identify them when you're out foraging. Now this is a blackberry uh, branch, blackberry bush, and the stems here you can see they have ridges all around them and they run lengthwise down all of the branches and they have quite a few thorns, okay? The raspberry bushes in the wild, they don't have those ridges. The branches are just smooth all the way. Let me show you. This is a raspberry branch and it doesn't have any of those ridges at all. It's just smooth. And generally they will have less thorns 
than the blackberry bushes. They'll still have th thorns, uh, but they will have less. The raspberries, their first year canes, will have a purple or reddish hue, um, and they have some white powdery stuff on there that you can rub off, and then it shows um, that they're purple. They lose that color a little bit on their second year canes, uh, but that's another way that you can tell the difference between the raspberries and the blackberries out when you're foraging. Now obviously you'll want to remember where you have found these bushes because you can come back later in the summer and harvest their berries. Here in our area, the black cap raspberries are ripe around the end of June and then the blackberries are ripe around 4th of July. Now I have found what I came out here to look for today and that is Dittany, which we call wild oregano. Now let me show you what it looks like. Now in the first, first of the spring, this is what it looks like coming out of the ground, but as it gets older, it actually changes quite a bit. It uh, is, has a square stem, kind of like mint. It must be in the mint family. But right now it has the most tender leaves. And for us, this is a perfect time for us to harvest, dry the leaves and keep it for the rest of the year. Now I actually prefer Dittany over the domesticated oreganos that you can buy at the store or that you can start in the house from seed because this Dittany's flavor lasts all year round even when it's dehydrated and I've had a problem finding other varieties of oregano that really taste good for the rest of the year. So this is what I'm harvesting out here today. Well, I found something else to show you. I found some pokeweed. Now around here, people eat a lot of poke. This plant will grow huge. It grows super tall. Uh, the stalks are bright red and then it produces some purplish reddish berries. Now pokeweed, at this stage, this young is not poisonous, <laughs> but once it gets big and once the stems start turning red, it is poisonous and the berries are super poisonous. The locals here will harvest this when they're young. They'll boil it in water and change the water, boil, change, boil, change, like at least three times, three to five times. And then they'll pan fry it with some, you know, bacon fat or something like that and they absolutely love it. Now, we were scared to try poke when we first moved here. I've never tried poke, but Kevin did one time. He did a video about it. Make sure you uh, check it out. Obviously, he didn't die. He's still alive, but it was a pretty fun video. But pokeweed is something edible when it's young. Try it at your own risk. There are various places on our property that have bunches of violets. There's a patch here that just has them sprinkled all around. Violets, the flowers and their leaves are edible and the leaves have some medicinal properties. Now all species of violets are edible, but so are uh, violas, Johnny jump ups and pansies. They're all in the same family they're all edible and they're so beautiful in a salad. Well, the last thing for today that I want to show you, I think is maybe the most important. This plant here is called mullen and uh, it is fuzzy and grows in a rosette like this. It gets really big. Right now it's just starting for the season. This is an important medicinal and I want you to look it up. I want you to make sure that it grows in your area and really learn how to identify it because it's very important, especially this day and age, okay? I'm actually going to harvest this entire plant because I am out of mullen up at the house. Well, it looks like Hope came over to see what we're up to. I think she's hoping that we'll give her some bunches of clover.
Mullen is a biennial, which means it will live for two years. The first year it will grow mostly leaves, and then the second year it will grow a big stalk that's going to have a bunch of yellow flowers on the top of it. Now the leaves are medicinal and the flowers are medicinal, so look into both of those and the medicinal properties. So like I said, I am going to um, harvest this entire plant, all the leaves. Now it will grow more leaves, so we don't have to worry about um, me doing damage to this. And I'll take it into the house. When you find one mullein plant, look around because generally there are several more around. And today I see another one here and right over there. And if I looked around, I could probably find a few more. They're very common and I think they grow all over the United States. I think she wants a handout. You want a treat? You want a treat? Oh, she's such a sweet girl. I know. Well, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed walking around with me and finding some edibles and medicinals. There are so many more. I could have spent the entire day with you showing you things that you can eat and things you can harvest for medicine. If you are interested in more things like this, make sure you uh, check out our playlist of foraging videos. But also there are a ton of resources available online for you to explore and find the wild edibles and medicinals in your area. Hey, if you're enjoying our channel, please make sure to subscribe. We would love it. And the best thing that you can do to help us here on the homestead is to share our videos with people who you think would enjoy what we're doing here and who may want to learn more homesteading things. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless.